hey gamers! Welcome back to The Code Zone. It's your girl, Cheyenne. In our last video, we focused on learning how to navigate the virtual world and use the basic tools to create different parts. We also built level one of our obby. And by the end of this video, we will have built out level two of our sixth level obby. We have lots to do, so let's get back to creating. All right, guys, let's get to coding. If you've closed out of the Roblox Studio and need to find your obby again, you'll go to File, Open from Roblox, and choose your game. Now, on to the fun part. Let's start by creating a separate area for level two of our futuristic obby. But first, let me go back to my storyboard to remember what I envisioned level two to look like. Ah, now I see. Level two was supposed to represent the disappearing forest caused by human development. In level two, we want to add more complex obstacles aside from our normal parts. And thankfully, that's really easy to do in Roblox. Roblox has an awesome community of software engineers and creative people that contribute to its library. A community that you're now part of, period. On the left-hand side, you will see your toolbox. The first tab is the marketplace, where others have added many different types of objects. The second tab is the objects you've bought and have added to your inventory. The third tab contains the objects you have used recently. And the last tab has objects that you've created. To start, we'll be mainly using the first tab, Marketplace, to find objects to add to our obby. Now that we're building level two, we want to add a new spawn base plate for our character to appear. Type in Checkpoint and you will see lots of options to choose from. A checkpoint is a base plate where the player can respawn or restart after reaching certain parts of your game. Choose the first checkpoint option. I'm going to drag and drop the checkpoint to the very end of level one. That way, our player who has made it safely across level one but has fallen in level two doesn't have to start all the way from the beginning of the game. I'm also going to add a checkpoint at the very end of level two for that same reason. Our players will thank us for this, okay? They better. <laughs> Every time you add a new part or object to the workspace, it is also added to the Explorer. It is good practice to rename your parts or objects so that you can tell the difference between them. Otherwise, you will have a lot of parts that say part or objects that say checkpoint, and that can be confusing when looking for specific parts or objects to change. Why don't we change the name of our checkpoint to checkpoint one. So to start level two, I need to create another floor that matches the theme of the new level. How might we do that? Hmm, I'll give you a hint. Work smarter and not harder. Okay, you heard, yeah. The easiest way is to select the current base plate from level one, then copy and paste the level two base plate along to the edge of level one. Next, let's change the color of the floor to match that of a forest and grass. So a brownish green will do. And we're gonna adjust the material to a leafy grass. Now, since obbies typically get harder as the player advances in levels, let's use the toolbox to find challenging obstacles. Need a little challenge, okay? A popular part to use is the conveyor belt, which moves characters and objects along the path at an accelerated pace. The conveyor belt makes sense at this level because it makes me think of the workers moving to and through the forest, working to clear it. Oh, God. I'm, that's a topic for another day. I don't even want to talk about it. Let's search for conveyor belt in the marketplace. You will see a lot of options to choose from. I'm going to select the second option, but feel free to choose the one you like best. Then I can drag that part to the place I want it to be on the floor. I can put together a few instant reset blocks, which will immediately send the character back to the last checkpoint. I put these along the conveyor belt, so the player has a challenge of avoiding them when they're moving fast. Thank you. 
Okay, I also want to add another element to make the level even harder than the first, okay? I know, I'm so evil. <laughs> so, I'm going to add a spinner. If the characters come in contact with the spinner, then they will be sent back to the checkpoint. So they will have to be really careful to avoid it. I'll imagine it is one of the deforestation construction tools the player has to watch out for in the forest. I'll imagine the spinner is just moving rapidly, chopping down trees in its path, like doo -doo 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 You Know what I'm saying? There are many types of spinners that you can choose from, but I want to add a metal spinner so that it looks like a construction tool. But please feel free to choose whatever you like best. I'll choose the lava spinner and just change the color to gray. After our players get through the spinner, let's have them go through an elevated path that mimics a tightrope maze. We'll need a tree to get to that pathway. Search for tower in the marketplace and place it at the edge of our level two base plate. Rename the model to tree tower. Now find the center part and rename it to trunk and change the color from red to brown in the property screen. And while we're at it, why don't we also change the color of each raised platform from gray to green? Time to add our pathway. Search for tightrope in the marketplace. Select the second option, tightrope. Create your maze-like pattern with the parts on the base plate. Once you're complete with your pattern, select all the parts, then click the group in the edit navigation bar. This will group all your parts together and create a model that you can rename Maze Log. Next, use the Move tool to elevate the path to the desired position connected to the tree tower. Once the maze is where you want it to be, you don't want it to move, right? So you can go and click Anchor in the Edit Navigation bar. Make sure your maze leads you to where you want your level three to begin. Now let's test it out. Press play and see if your avatar can make it through the tower tree and log maze. Y'all, oh my God, I can't even deal. We are making great progress on level two of our obby. We're almost through this level, but before we finish, why don't we add another little fun object to our course? This time, we will be adding a couple of buttons. Buttons have many functions. When you press a button, it can either make a part appear or disappear, it can make a sound, and it can activate and deactivate objects. You know how people love pressing buttons for whatever reason, even if they don't know what it'll do? Well, we're going to try to see if our players fall into this trap. It's a little sneaky of us, but it's all fair and fun and Roblox. So let's add a self-destruct button on top of the platform of our tree tower that will destroy our entire world. <laughs> I know it's a bit dramatic, but so is the fact that our forests are being destroyed. Okay, talk about that now. Why don't you go ahead and explore the different buttons and try adding them to your obby? Now, let's finish level two of our obby. I mean, can you believe all the progress we've made in just one video? Now that we're at the end of level two, 
Can you guess what we'll need to do? Hmm? Add another checkpoint? Bet. That way, a player can respawn here in case they don't make it across level three. Now that I've completed level two, I am going to save my progress so that I can continue to work on it next time by going to File, Save to Roblox. Okay fam, you did that, but if you're craving to add more into level one and two obby before our next video, please go ahead and have fun doing that. I'll see you back here for video four whenever you're ready. We'll bring everything that we learned together to create our level three of our obby and learn more about how to make customizations so that our obby can be even more unique and challenging for our players. Bye for now. And as always, game on.